Hey there, Postal here. Jeez. <clears throat> what am I doing? What am I doing with my life? Um, so today's going to be... Well, it's going to be a video. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure what plane to actually uh, post a video on. I was looking through some of my old uh, recordings that I just never got around to posting. And I saw this. Uh, what is this plane? Pilots. This is the Venom, and I thought, considering everything that's going on with Wargaming, uh, Venom is probably a pretty good name uh, for everything. So, I don't even really know how to start this conversation. Um, you know, I've, I've talked about it a decent amount on uh, stream. Um, this last Friday and Saturday. Um, just with everything that's been going on with Wargaming and their practices and this, really their inability to give a rat's ass. Um, I understand that they're a business, but it doesn't mean they need to be that kind of business. So what's going on for those of you that are somehow out of the loop? Because I kind of assume most people that play World of Warplanes have played or still play World of Tanks or have played or still play World of Warships. And those are the, you know, the, the crown jewels of wargaming games. Uh, that's where the vast majority of their player base is. It's certainly where the vast majority of their money earned is. So my, my assumption could be misplaced, but I assume that... The majority of you have heard of the things that have been going on. Um, some background on my relationship with Wargaming. I've never been any kind of anything that has a relationship with them other than a wallet. And that's, you know, like 99.99% of people that play this game. Played World of Tanks for years. Um, started in 2013. Um, was pretty darn good at the game, to be honest, and thought, you know, maybe I should create some content. Um, you know, got a new computer, started taking steps to, you know, create videos or open up a YouTube channel, um, and then started playing um, this as well for a little while, and just really fell in love with the, the whole World of Warplanes concept. I just love... Um, you know, what this plane allows you to do. I love planes in general. And, you know, having that premium time from World of Tanks certainly made it easier to transition over to World of Warplanes. I watched videos on top of videos um, in regards to World of Tanks and World of Warships, even though I wasn't playing it at that time. I just like, like this era like these vehicles, whether again, whether it's tanks, planes, or ships. I like the era. I, mean, I probably like modern era as well, so I suppose it's not saying much, but I just like the concept. Um, but that's, you know, maybe you, maybe you just, your ears perked up there. Oh, your premium time. Yeah, World of Tanks, if you really want to be viable in World of Tanks, um, or especially if you're still grinding, um, you kind of need premium time. Yeah, it's free to play a game. These are all free to play. But if, if you don't want to take literally years to get to one tier 10 plane, uh, excuse me, one tier 10 tank, World of Tanks is definitely worse um, economics than World of Warplanes. You need premium time. That's how I got my first tier 10 tank. Um, it wasn't a skill set issue. It was a I cry, a grinding issue. Um, you know, I took advantage of a, a quote unquote sale that they had on premium time. Um, it was one of their their Christmas sales. I remember it vividly. First t first thing I, money I ever spent on the game was when Fury came out. Um, I got a the actual Fury. Plus a um, year of premium time. It basically added up to uh, a tier 6 premium, a Fury, which is awesome. I mean, it's not the best tank, but it's just awesome, you know, tank. 
Um, a year's worth of premium time and like 3,000 gold, something like that, uh, for around $100. Uh, which, you know, basically means I got 3,000 gold and a Fury tank for free, with quotes around it. Um, but, getting that premium time really opened my eyes up to, you know, what happens in World of Tanks when you spend money. Um, suddenly, like, I got two tier 10 tanks pretty quickly after that. I was actually gaining credits. And I was like, oh, this is what it's like to have credits in this game. Um, it didn't really dawn on me the behaviors that Wargaming was setting up in me. Um, but it is, it's, it's a behavior I recognize now looking back that, you know, yeah, they're free to play, and I appreciate that you could conceivably be completely free in those games, but unless you're next level good, it's not going to actually be fun. It's literally going to be the grind that we all talk about grinds being. And, and that's just one of the games, right? World of Warships is not any better. Um, you know, and... and Wargaming's just gotten a lot worse about it. Not that you necessarily, again, you don't need, and I mean that with quotes around it, you don't need premium time. You can conceivably be completely free to play, but those that are 100% free to play, even in World of Warplanes, which like I said, has much better economics than either of the other two um, games, you're just gonna be taking forever to get to where you want to go. Um, it's something that I need to, that, that I'm definitely mindful of when I'm making videos, when I'm answering questions. Um, when somebody's saying, well, what did you do in this situation? You know, I've already specialized planes. I've already maximized my lines on World of Tanks. You know, that kind of stuff. And I need to think back, okay, well, shoot, what do you need to do if you've actually got to literally grind the full length of this freaking plane? Um, me playing on the European server actually has helped quite a bit in coming to terms with that, because for the most part, me playing on EU and World of Warplanes has been uh, free to play. I have uh, been lucky enough to be gifted some premium time, some some of my subscribers and followers. I've uh, been very lucky to have some premium planes be um, given to me on EU. Um, but even with that. It's a slog trying to get down the European line, uh, the the European servers' lines. Uh, NA, where I've kind of basically maxed out the account, is like it's actually fun on NA because I can kind of do what I want. Whereas when you're you're grinding down the lines, you're kind of stuck, um, you know, doing what what the game is dictating that you do because you don't have the credits or you don't have the um, XP. To do what you want to do, anyway. Um, and so, you know, what's going on in, in World of Warships where they are now putting premium content behind loot boxes um, basically exclusively. Um, you know, this is the trend they've been moving to. It's not necessarily that they're doing it for the Missouri, which is what they're doing. But if you look at the trend that Wargaming has had, and this is not just a World of Warships thing, this is definitely a World of Tanks thing, and there's certainly a hint of it in World of Warplanes, don't be mistaken. The trend is definitely further and further down that pathway. Um, and we're, we're looking at that in World of Warplanes, don't be mistaken. Steel crates, any of the crates that are available, we're lucky right now that they're available with the plane. I'm not sure how much longer that's going to stay. And the way that, that they're kind of taking the steps to set us up for that, right? They didn't just go directly to steel crates. Um, and just like they didn't go directly to loot boxes in any of their products. But they, they provided these unique crates a couple years ago. And then um, the special crates. And now they're onto steel crates that give you or have the ability to get you premium planes. Um, and yeah, so like right now, 
the JL1, what is it, the JL1A37. You can buy that straight up, and it even comes with steel crates. What I see happening though, or at least if there's no um, intervention, is eventually those crates will be just the crates, and hey, we've added the JL1A to it for this month only. So you buy those steel crates and you've got a small chance of getting the JL1A this month because that's the special premium plane. And yeah, that's, I mean, if, if you look back at their history, have they been adding those kind of things? You can still buy steel crates on the side. Um, and that's, that's completely, I mean, RNG based in the worst way. We complain about RNG, especially in World of Tanks, but I mean it's there in, in warships. It's there to a lesser extent in, in warplanes when it comes to, you know, what damage is done to you and what damage you're outputting. I mean, ramming planes is a pr is a prime example um, of of when RNG is working. And so, you know, I look at the trend that wargaming has done as an overall company, and it bugs me to say the least. It's the, the, the word choice I can think of right now. Um, and I would absolutely hate for that. I like that, okay, if you want to spend money on a premium plane, on premium time, then so be it. That's great. You got the money. It's your money. Do with it as you choose. I, I try to give reviews on these planes so that way you know at least if you're spending the money that you're, is it a good enough plane to actually buy. Um, but if they if they move to the path that the other wargaming titles have moved to, where it's basically behind a um, loot box wall, which from a, a business perspective, sure, makes more money for them. I understand their business. I'm not trying to take that away from them. But there's got to be a balance. You can't possibly tell me that wargaming has not been making money hand over fist over these last years. Um, the CEO of Wargaming is the first gaming billionaire. Did you guys know that? A couple years ago, in fact, he was a billionaire. The first CEO of a, of a, a, a game product. CEO of, of EA. The CEO of, CEO of Blizzard. Those guys aren't billionaires. The CEO of Wargaming is. So you know they're making money. I know they're popular in Russia and they're popular in Europe they're still they're making money give us a break we're already spending the money on the premium planes right we're already spending money on the premium time I know that everybody is clearly but to try to get an extra five to ten dollars out of everybody on the chance that you might get something out of a loot box because that's what it is they're not trying to get people to spend more money on premium time those people are already spending the money on premium time. What they're trying to do is those people that aren't necessarily spending money, they're trying to get them to spend $5 on some loot boxes, basically, on the off chance that they get something. And I can tell you, I've been gifted a lot of, of these steel crates, been gifted um, and, and bought a handful of steel crates, and I've gotten one premium plane out of 40 or more steel crates on NA. And so, like, the percentage just isn't, it's not there. So, I hope you guys understand my perspective here. I'm still going to be playing the game, but it's, there's definitely going to be some tailored back excitement about the game. Um, and I do, I love the game. Don't get me wrong. I mean, don't, don't, I'm put in an odd position, like we all are, right? Um, I want to continue to play the game. I enjoy this game so much. I really do. I love planes. I love the way that you can, you know, th th this game interacts with other players. I love the community. World of War Planes, honestly, of the three um, games that I've just talked about, is definitely the best of the three, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just... I'm lost for words, and I'm kind of just, uh, kind of just trying to get through it like everybody else, right? Um, I'll be honest with everybody. I am definitely looking at other games to play. Um, obviously, I play other games in my my off time, 
but I'm definitely looking at other games to to create content for. As much as War Thunder has rubbed me the wrong way, it hasn't isn't necessarily the game that's rubbed me the wrong way. It's the holier than now War Thunder community that's rubbed me the wrong way. Um, that being said, you know, so it's just another thing that makes me want to stay with Warplanes and has put me in this odd position. You know, so from a content creator perspective, it's just hard to to put my whole lot in with a company that I can't necessarily feel like I can stand behind. It certainly isn't a company that I feel comfortable that they're standing behind me. Uh, and not me specifically, but our community, like you, other players, other content creators. You know, we're the ones investing our time. We're the ones that are, um, you know, trying to be a positive impact, and, and we'll see what comes of that. But So you might see some other videos, some other games in the futures. You know, if, if there's something you guys want to see, tell me. Do you think I'm at a place here? Am I... Am I just completely out of left field? Um, is it something that is, uh, you know, hey, it's war gaming, this will pass, stick with it and be done with it? Um, what, what are you guys' perspectives on this whole thing? I'd really love to hear it. Um, and we'll kind of just see where we go. So yeah, didn't really even talk about the Venom here. It is a plane that you can only get in crates, basically, um, or if they've got specials, so I thought it was kind of uh, apropos. Thank you for kind of joining me with my ridiculous rant here. Um, I'm confused as anybody, but I hope we can help each other out. Have a great day.